धनंजना शलाकया चक्षुरुन मिलितम् ये ना तस्माय श्री गुरवे नमः
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे
Speaking, it's Srimad really Bhagavatam that's speaking. Um, we will say invocation prayers um, and then I'll do a little recap, uh, particularly for anyone because it's been a bit of a gap since we were reading Bhagavatam. Um, and um, then it's verse 10 on the board, but I'll read verse 9 and then we'll chant verse. 10 together, if that's all right, and then I'll speak a little bit about um, that. Omegyana Timirandasya, Gananjana Shalakaya, Chakshuran Militam Yena, Tasma Sri Guru Vena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Svayam Rupa Kadamayam, Dadati Svahadanti Kam, Vandeham Sri Guru, Sri Uta Padakamalam, Sri Guru Vaishnavam Scha, 
Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Sha Hey Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagadvate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaskute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vindavanishvari Vishavanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Kriye Vancha Kalpa Tuliascha Krupa Sindhu Gurevacha Patitanam Pavanityo Vaishnavityo Monamaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Siva Siddhoga Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So we're reading from the 8th Canto, chapter 23. And what's gone on before? Hari Bol? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not working. Um, so we're reading from the 23rd chapter, which is entitled That the Demigods Regain the Heavenly Planet. So what's gone on before is that um, Bali, King of the Demons, He's conquered everything that could be conquered. Um, and uh, Lord Vishnu comes in the form of Vamandev to uh, get back the uh, kingdoms for the demigods and um, also to fulfill previous promises. And um, Vamandev agrees. Uh, although his uh, guru said, be careful because this Vamandev is actually Lord Vishnu. Um, but, you know, he came in the form of a, of a young Brahmana and Bali Maharaj agreed, you can ask me for anything you want. And after due consideration, he uh, felt it was more appropriate to honour his promise than it was to, to um, neglect to neglect the orders of his spiritual master or um, to not honour the Vaishnav. So he agreed and of course Vamadev asked for three uh, steps of land and um, with two, with his left foot, he um, poked through the universe and um, uh, there was nowhere for the third foot step to go and um, Bali Maharaj couldn't fulfill his promise, so he was bound with the ropes of the uh, uh, Varundev and um, effectively imprisoned. Um, but he offered his uh, head and to the Lord and said, you know, put your foot here. Um, and in so doing, he's paying obeisances to the Lord and uh, with this he was released and the, the Lord rewarded him with the kingdom of Sutala. So we're now carrying on into the next chapter uh, where Shukadev Goswami uh, had said that the, uh, when the supreme, ancient, eternal personality of God had thus spoken to Bali Maharaj who is universally accepted as a pure devotee of the Lord and therefore a great soul uh, Bali Maharaj, his eyes filled with tears, his hands folded and his voice faltering in devotional ecstasy re responded as follows. 
Bali Maharaj said, what a wonderful effect there is in even attempting to offer respectful obeisances to you. I merely endeavoured to offer you obeisances, but nonetheless the attempt was as successful of those, as those of pure devotees. The causeless mercy you have shown to me, a fallen demon, was never achieved even by the demigods or the leaders of the various planets. Shukadev Goswami continued, after speaking in this way, Bali Maharaj offered his obeisances first to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari and then to Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. Thus he was released from the bondage of the Nagapash, the ropes of Varu, and in full satisfaction he entered the planet known as Sutala. Thus, having delivered the proprietorship of the heavenly planets to Indra, and having fulfilled the desire of Aditi, mother of the demigods, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, ruled the affairs of the universe. When Prahlad Maharaj heard how Bali Maharaj, his grandson and descendant, had been released from bondage and had achieved the benediction of the Lord, he spoke as follows in a tone of greatly ecstatic devotion. Prahlad Maharaj said, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, you are universally worshipped. Even Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva worship your lotus feet. Yet, although you are such a great personality, you have kindly promised to protect us, the demons. I think that such kindness has never been achieved even by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, or the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, what to speak of other demigods or common people. O supreme shouter of everyone, great personalities like Brahma enjoy their perfection simply by tasting the honey of rendering service at your lotus feet. But as for us who are all rogues and debauchees, born of an envious family of demons, how have we received your mercy? It has been possible only because your mercy is causeless. O oh my Lord, your pastimes are all wonderfully performed by your inconceivable spiritual energy and by her perverted reflection, the material energy. You have created all the universes as the super soul of all living entities. You are aware of everything and therefore you are certainly equal toward everyone. Nonetheless, you favour your devotees. This is not partiality, however, for your characteristic is just like that of a desire tree, which yields everything according to one's desire. So there we are reaching the verses on the board for today. Um, I'll read, as I said, verse uh, text 9. Sri Bhagavan Racha I'll we'll repeat verse 10. Vatsa parad padramte prayahi sutalayam modamanahasta potrena yanitam sukha avaha. Translation is The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear son Prahlad, all good fortune unto you. For the time being, please go to the place known as Sutala and there enjoy happiness with your grandson and your other relatives and friends. Uh, there's no purport to that verse. I think that's why verse 10 is on the board. So verse 10. Nityam, Nityam. Drashtasi, Drashtasi. Mam, Mam. Tatra, Tatra. Nityam Drashtasi Mam Tatra. Nityam Drashtasi Mam Tatra. Gada, Panim, Avistitam, Avastitam, Gada Panim, Avastitam, Gada Panim, Avastitam, Maddarshana, Mahalada, Maddarshana, Mahalada, Dvasta, Karma, Nibandana, Dvastakamani Bandana. 
Nityam trastasi mam tatra Nityam trastasi mam tatra Kadapanin avastitam Kadapanin avastitam Maddarshana mahavada Maddarshana mahavada Vastakama nibandana Vastakama nibandana Nityam drastasi mam tatra Nityam drastasi mam tatra Kadapanin avastitam Kadapanin avastitam Maddarshana mahada Maddarshana mahada Vastakama nibandana Vastakama nibandana Nityam drastasi mam tatra Nityam drastasi mam tatra Sutalalok, Gadapanim, with a club in my hand, Avastitam, situated there, Maddarshana, by seeing me, in that form, Maha Ahlad, by the great transcendental bliss. Vasta, having been vanquished, <coughs> karma nibandhanaha, the bondage of fruitive activities. So, reverse translation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead assured Prahlad Maharaj, you shall be able to see me there in my usual feature with conch shell, disc, club and lotus in my hand. Because of your transcendental bliss due to always personally seeing me, you will have no further bondage to fruity activities. We can repeat. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Godhead. assured Prahlad Maharaj, Maharaj. you shall be able able to see me there in my usual feature, in my usual feature. With, conch shell, with conch shell, 
disc, club and lotus in my hand. Because of your transcendental bliss, due to always personally seeing me, you will have no further bondage to fruited activities. Purport by His Divine Grace, Sri Prabhupada. Karma Bandha. Sorry, I'll read the purple. <laughs> Karma Bandha, the bondage of fruited activities, entails the repetition of birth and death. One performs fruited activities in such a way that he creates another body for his next life. As long as one is attached to fruited activities, he must accept another material body. This repeated acceptance of material bodies is called samsara bandhana. To stop this, a devotee is advised to see the Supreme Lord constantly. The Kanishta Adhikari or neophyte devotee is therefore advised to visit the temple every day and see the form of the Lord regularly. Thus, the neophyte devotee can be freed from the bondage of fruited activities. So, um, I'm going to pick out one or two words. Uh, we um, noted, some, it's quite difficult to say, maha ah, mahaklada. This is maha ahlad. Maha, of course, means great. And ahlad is uh, a, um, a very high state of pleasure or happiness. Um, so we know that pralad, pralad, mahlad, and of course the internal potency of the Lord is khadini, shakti. So this great pleasure um, was going to be um, the benefit to Prahlad Maharaj um, to go and spend. The, some time on Sutta Lok. Um, then um, Gada Panim, Gada Panim, with, cl- with a club in my hand. So the verse is mentioning just the club, Gada Panim. Um, but Srila Prabhupada, in the purport, he, so in the translation, he's um, writing my usual feature with conch shell, disc, club and lotus in my hand. Um, and this is quite uh, important um, that uh, there is a system to describing the uh, 24 uh, Vishnu incarnations um, and in the Chaitanya Chaitanya Madhya Lila, 20th chapter, then Lord Chaitanya explains these uh, uh, according to, he, he says, um, Siddhartha uh, Samhita Kore uh, Chabish Mukti Gan, Ganana, Ganana. Yeah, so Chavish is 24 and 20, so 24 um, uh, uh, manifestations of the Vishnu form. And they're described according to the position of the the club, the conch, the disc and the lotus. And they're described from the right lower hand to the right upper hand, to the left upper hand, to the left lower hand. So this description which describes that the conch shell is in the right upper hand, the disc is in the right lower hand, the club is in the left upper hand, and the lotus is in the left lower hand, then this is the specific feature or form of the Lord um, that Prahlad will, will see constantly on uh, Sutala Lotus. So this um, this is interesting because obviously Prahlad he, he met Lord Lord Nishingadev 
uh, and Lord Nishingadev um, has this lotus club uh, and the conch. So he has a different formation and Vishnu has club, lotus, conch and disc in this formation um, and Narayan has conch, lotus, club and disc. So the form that he's describing, can anyone guess if that's the right word, what form he's describing through the Prabhupada that Prahlad Maharaj will, will be able to see in Sutalalo with conch, disc, club and lotus. This is the form of Dharmandev. This is the four feature form of Dharmandev. So, Dharmandev, the Lord is saying to, to Prahlad Maharaj, when you go to Sutalok, actually, I'll be there in my four handed feature. Uh, not, not, you know, he appeared with two hands to Jivali Maharaj. So, um, uh, this uh, is the um, benefit. And of course, we, we know that Prahlad Maharaj, he is very um, special because um, we know that there are nine processes to devotional service. And um, each of those nine processes, they have a um, specific person who is the exemplar of that, um, that aspect of devotional service and while each, each, uh, each um, <clears throat> of the nine methods of devotional service are particularly uh, um, special in that each individual one can actually take us back to Godhead. But Srila Prabhupada recommends that actually we, um, we engage in a number of these, these processes. Um, and in fact, that's what we're doing right now because the first two are Shravanam and Kirtanam. So Shravanam is listening, and so you are listening to what um, Shukadev Goswami has written in Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, and the person who originally sat and listened for seven days was of course Parikshit Maharaj. So Parikshit Maharaj having learned, again like Bali Maharaj, he was the, the king of the entire creation and he uh, had everything but he was given seven days notice that the uh, Tataksha snake would bite him fatally and although he, uh, uh, Parikshit Maharaj, actually had the potency to, um, uh, to counter this curse, he didn't. He went to the, the banks and he, of the river and he listened to Shukadev Goswami. So Parikshit Maharaj exemplifies Shravanam and Shukadev Goswami, Kirtanam, and uh, Prahlad Maharaj uh, Smaranam because he's always remembering the Lord and if you remember in the, the life of Prahlad uh, Maharaj as the, the son of Hiranyakashipu he was always um, <coughs> having difficulty um, with his father trying to kill him because he was a devotee and he was um, explaining that the best thing that he'd heard was about devotional service and not actually what Hiranya Kashipur wanted the, uh, the Brahmanas to teach him, which was how to be a good demon. Um, so Prahlad Maharaj, he, he was always remembering the Lord. Um, and uh, the, the other, um, uh, Lakshmi Devi, is always serving the Lord. Uh, King Prithu is also always worshipping the deity. Uh, Akura always praying, Hanuman was always uh, serving Lord um, uh, Ram uh, and of course Arjuna is uh, the friend of Krishna Sakyajana so he's there and the, the uh, exemplar of sacrificing everything for Krishna is Bali, Bali Maharaj 
So it's like in society, we have sort of like, I don't know, the 10 most famous people or uh, the 10 wealthiest people. We have a list of the nine exemplars of the nine processes of devotional service. And Bali Maharaj is the exemplar of sacrificing everything for Krishna, because that's exactly what he did. He had everything, and he, he basically said, <laughs> you take it, because I've said to you, you can have whatever you want, and this is the result. And he, he accepted that. Um, and there's a, of course, Bali Maharaj is also on the list of Mahajans. So he's on two, like, very uh, important lists. Um, so this is really uh, very wonderful that we can hear about Bali Maharaj and his pastimes and we can understand the, um, if you like, the benefits of devotional service, um, even a, a little bit of devotional service. <coughs> In the translation, uh, sorry, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada um, is explaining that for the Kanishta Adhikari uh, or neophyte devotee, is there anyone who's not heard that term before? I'm just wondering, do you know that term? Pardon me, I thought you might not know that term. So Kanishta means a, a, a new person, a neophyte, someone who's just beginning to learn about Krishna and learn, learn about the importance of devotional uh, service rather than, than materially based uh, activities. Um, and so Srila Prabhupada is suggesting that such a person, they could go to the temple every day. Um, now, the, not everywhere has a temple. Yeah? Uh, Srila Prabhupada explains in one purport that in India there are, there are so many temples and people have a daily habit of going to the temple. I know that my wife, when she grew up uh, in, in Uganda, then you know, at the end of the day, at 7 p.m., everyone would go to the temple for Arti. This was the, the, the culture. Everyone would go to the temple, and by going to the temple, they would worship the Lord, uh, and they would remember the Lord. So this is, is a good uh, pastime to, to undertake. Um, and by... Um, regularly undertaking some devotional service, then uh, one's devotional position can become more steady. And steady is referred to madhyam, madhyam middle, madhyam, uh, madhyam adhikari, someone who is steady in their devotional practice. Um, and the madhyam has the ability to discriminate sort of what is good and what isn't good for their devotional um, life and their devotional well-being. However, the Kanishta is, hasn't yet acquired the skill to, to um, understand what is beneficial and what isn't beneficial. And therefore, their, their Bhakti Lata Bij, their, their devotional um, creeper, is, is vulnerable, you know, like so many plants have been vulnerable to this intense heat for you know so many weeks and now the rain came what ekadashi magnanimity you know on the night of ekadashi then the rain came um, and so many plants will be will be so happy i mean we're all so happy to see the rain after such a long such a long time so the the the, the creeper of devotion it can be nurtured by devotional activities such as reading uh, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, by hearing <coughs> these uh, scriptures and pastimes. And then the, 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 the devotional position becomes more steady. Um, but the, the Madhyam still has to discriminate because he or she is still vulnerable to being um, knocked off the, the perch sort of thing. So the um, by being steady over a long time, then the uh, level of uttama, uttama adhikari is, is, is obtained. And the uttama adhikari, they, they, they don't necessarily have to discriminate because they're actually situated in the spiritual world, but they, they, they're here and they're preaching. Uh, and they are helping others to become, <coughs> excuse me, Krishna conscious. Um, 
So this is the mercy of the Uttama Dikari. And the, I say they don't have to discriminate because they have the potency to make everyone Krishna conscious. Like Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as he travelled uh, around India, every village he went to, everyone became a devotee. It was, you know, and if you travel South India and you see these places, you can see what wonderful um, devotees and temples there are. Um, and of course, uh, other great saints have come. Srila Prabhupada has um, uh, taken the, the, the trouble and the magnanimity to leave Vrindavan and come to the Western countries to fulfill the request of his spiritual master. And it's only because of him doing that that actually we have this opportunity um, that someone like myself, you know, I was explaining yesterday in 1974, I heard Harinam Sankirtan on the streets of Birmingham. And in 1978, I received the um, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in book distribution. And this is the mercy of the devotees that they, they are. Um, Srila Prabhupada came and he came and he chanted the holy name and he distributed the Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is what is uh, the foundation of, of this movement as we move ahead in Krishna consciousness. Um, Bali Maharaj is also, <coughs> you know, we think we, we can observe that Bali Maharaj actually he he was really fortunate. He he gave everything to um, Vamandev, and Vamandev puts his you know hand on his sorry his foot on his head, um, but actually also in the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, which Srila Prabhupada describes in the 85th chapter of the um, Krishna book, then um, the further, if you like, glory of ba Bali Maharaj is explained. Does, does anyone know that pastime? Sri Manaha probably knows no? that. Uh, <coughs> And I, I'll just take it back. I know some people don't like personal examples, but I'll just give this uh, personal example <coughs> that uh, when I was young, <coughs> like nine years old, uh, I used to have this uh, special problem which would come on in the morning so that I didn't have to go to school. Um, <coughs> and uh, I would spend the day with my mother. And. Um, The reason for that, as I look back, is more clear to me now than it was at the time. Um, <clears throat> but I, I was always very happy to, to please my mother. Um, not least because uh, one time she was... Uh, uh, well, I asked her because I, I'm the sixth of nine children. So being a mother of nine children is a pretty busy job. And my mother would get up at 5 a.m. She would say her morning prayers. Um, she would do her household chores. She would stop at midday, say her midday prayers. She would carry on her chores and she would then say her evening prayers. And at about 10 o'clock she would take rest. She didn't read magazines. She didn't watch television. If she had any time at all, she would read the Bible. But that was her. And then one of those days, it was a Monday morning, and I remember, and I was helping her with the ironing because that was a big task with nine kids, so it was really wonderful to help her. And I, I asked her, how do you get up at 5 a.m. and work all the way through to 10 p.m. without stopping? And she said, because I do everything for the Lord. Now, I didn't realize the importance of that. Well, that's really very amazing. And to please the mother is a very special thing. So if we have the, the, the pleasure to please the mother, then it must come from the spiritual world. Because everything here is there in the spiritual world. So um, Krishna was able to please his mother. And when Krishna and Balaram came to Vasudev and Devki, then Vasudev appreciated 
Krishna was the supreme personality of Godhead, Yogeshwara, uh, Balaram was Sankashan, you know, they weren't just ordinary children. And Vasudev went into a, a, a discourse of, of glorification and Devaki is sitting by and she's listening. And then when Vasudev had spoken, he was speechless. You know, sometimes you can get to a point where you're actually speechless. And so when he stopped speaking, then Devaki uh, asked Krishna and Balaram, because she remembered that you were very kind to your guru, Sandipani Muni, because Sandipani Muni's son had died, that you went to the superintendent of death, Yamaraj, and you brought him back. So I'm very much thinking about my six sons, because if you remember the first six children of Devaki were killed by Kamsa when they were newborn. Yeah? So those six children, Mother Devaki was thinking, what about my, my babies? So hearing this, then uh, Krishna and Balaram, they decided, of course, to, to do this for their mother. And where were those six children? They were in Sutalamok. They were in Sutalamok. They were on Bali Maharaj's planet. So Krishna and Balaram went to Sutalamok and when uh, Bali Maharaj heard that Krishna and Balaram had arrived, he just melted into an ocean of happiness. And he offered um, the best seat in the house to Krishna and Balaram, and he personally bathed their feet, and he sprinkled the water from the bathing of their feet onto his head and the head of all his family members. And then he, took the, he fed the Lord, as you do, and then he took the feet of the Lord and he held them on his chest and on his head. And Krishna and Balaram, they accepted all of this devotion from Bali Maharaj and then after some conversation, then um, Krishna asked Bali Maharaj if the, the six uh, because you don't just come to someone's planet and take away, you know, <laughs> six residents just like that. So uh, Krishna and Balaram, and of course, Balimaj agreed, yes. Um, so that's what they did. Krishna and Balaram, they took the six children, but they took, Krishna and Balaram took them as newborn babies. Yeah. So Mother Devaki, she's absolutely, you can't imagine, you know, the. We, we, we talk about the, the, the love of a mother for the child being the closest thing to, to our, our love of God. So uh, Devaki's got her six babies back and her milk starts flowing and she feeds the babies and she's just in ecstasy. Um, and Krishna has explained to Bali that this, when after coming back, then these six uh, children they will actually return because they were, of course, demigods originally and they, they committed some offence, which is why they went through this process. Um, <coughs> and um, indeed, the, 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 the babies were uh, liberated and reinstated um, uh, in their uh, original positions as, as demigods. Um, so it's really a very, you know, Bali Maharaj is, is so special to meditate on. Um, we can also meditate. I was just looking at the <coughs> uh, murti in the next room, and this murti has the conch club disc lotus in the form of Madhava. Yeah? So I hadn't spotted that before. So yeah, this is Madhava. Uh, 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 um, incarnation of, of, of Lord Vishnu and of course one of the very important things that we do every day because as, as uh, Mahaprabhu said there are 24 then from the 5th to the 16th of these incarnations we install every day on our bodies with the tilak you know, we put 
Om Namo Keshava, Om Namo Namo. And then we put around. And we put Brahman there. Yeah. So we install 12 deities on the temple of the body. And then any tilak we have left, we have put on the top and we say, Om Namo Vasudeva, Om Namo Namo. Of course, Vasudeva is the first of those 24. <coughs> and I'll just uh, tell a, a sort of story of, 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 of how I appreciated uh, that. The importance of that is, is that um, I went with, my, with a party of people, including my spiritual master, to uh, Eka Chakra. And Eka Chakra is in North Bengal. <coughs> We're going from Mayapur, everyone knows it's a very long journey, it's austere. You go on the road, but you get seasick on the road because the road is so undulating and the bus is, it's like, you know, the juggernaut swaying. So the bus is going, and when you get to Eka Chakra, then you're dust, dusty and you're hot. So we take a bath. So we took a bath in Padmavati Kund, which is the lake that's there. And after getting out the lake, then we took some mud from the edge of the lake and we made a tilak on, on our heads. And my spiritual master looked at us and said, 8% devotees. I thought, wow, 8%, that's pretty high. <laughs> well, I'm lucky for 1% of what he's been, right? That was being a bit cheeky in my head. Um, but actually what he was explaining is that we put all the telex, 8% and Vasudev, and that's 100% of installation. So we, sh we you know, shouldn't just put the telex. And of course he gave me the instruction that I should always wear telex at work, which I did. Um, and that leads to some interesting pastimes. Uh, my favorite of which was a young girl who came in, uh, she was about 17, I'd not seen her before, and she came into the office and she, she, she took one look, she saw the tilak and she said, wow, my doctor's a Hare Krishna. Just like that, I thought no one's ever done that before. Next sentence, you make wonderful food. Yeah. So okay, you've been, I, I, You've been to somewhere, so I asked her. She'd been to Glastonbury, Parashuram Prabhu Ki Jai, you know. She'd been to Glastonbury Festival and she'd taken the Krishna Prasad every day at the festival. And so she immediately recognized. And this is actually very important. And one of the reasons that we wear Tilak is to remind others about Krishna, about Lord Vishnu, but also, like Bali Maharaj, to remind us as we put the Tilak on that we're putting our head to the lotus feet of the Lord. Um, so I think I should stop at that point and ask if there's any other comments, corrections, or uh, questions. Oh, probably. Yeah, so, uh, there's a connection because I also heard a story about uh, the six children who were thrown in the Ganges. Is there a connection with this? I don't know. Um, Manahal, probably do you, do you know? No? In, in um, C.C. Madhya it's a long chapter, chapter 20, 400 plus verses, from about 219 then this explanation is, is, is given. Um, and the names of, the, I, I'm, I can't remember the six names of, of the demigods, but they are, they are there. Who those <coughs> six people were, that's also in the Krishna book. Uh, as well, but I, I don't know of any link to another six. I guess there's that risk, isn't there, that the number six gets transferred? But uh, huh. no, no, yes. no. They, 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 those six demigods, they took birth as uh, children of Hiranyakashipu. That was the first birth, uh, and then they were born into the to the womb of Devaki, and then they were killed by Kamsa. Uh, and then they went to Sutalalok, and then from Sutalalok, Krishna uh, rescued them at the request of Devaki. Um, and uh, uh, that then, then they reinstated back as demigods, you know, so they, they paid for their offence to Lord Brahma, uh, which is 
why they why they came down. So yeah. this will be probably another story. Now. I think it's another story. It might be another yuga because you know. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but the story with the Bhishma Dev, they are seven. Seven. Six. Yeah, but Bhishma Dev is the seventh. Well, it's, yeah. yeah. So yeah. means there are seven. Well, but the six because originally seven came from. Because he, he, he uh, later on he asked why his children were thrown in the Ganges. And, and there is an explanation, I think, from Prabhupada that this bear uh, was arranged. No, but you see, but the, actually, I start a little bit remembering the story. They committed offense in the, in the, in the, in the heaven, and but Bhishma did excuse, begged forgiveness. That's why he he, he was, was spared from, from, from the killing. <coughs> no, yes. There's something was there, but oh. there were seven. Who, who did some whatever they did, oh, yeah. and they yeah. ended up here okay. in six. Yeah. So different pastime. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any any other comments or questions? Ad Adibotic activity. Yeah. Mosquitoes. You know, Hare Krishna Dasi mentioned yesterday, Adi Atmi, you know, when we don't take care of our own spiritual well being, that's Adi Atmi, Adi Bhotik is, is other living entities <laughs> giving us hassle. <laughs> so that's mosquitoes, number one. And of course, Adi Daivik, she mentioned these terrible fires and, and that, that are, and floods, you know, they're Adi Atmi, they're the three things that we have to endure in the material world. Um, any other questions, comments? I haven't heard it because there's a sort of noise and my hearing yeah. is not so good. Lord Bali keep his, keep his promise to... to Bali Mara kept his promise, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I, I would like to know uh, who he gives his promise, then he will keep it always to, to the sage. He gave the promise to Vamandev. No, I haven't understood the question. Did anyone else? I don't know how far did you hear this? No, I was, I was looking at something else here, trying to figure out what this said and so on. So, yeah, I I would well, have is the question you just is wish it, you know, why you speak, yeah. we don't hear you. Uh, the, 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 essentially, I understand the question is, um, Balar Maharaj made a promise, yes. and to whom did he make the promise? Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, because then he kept the promise. Yeah. So 
time understanding that he's made the promise to Vamandev. Yeah, right? No, the promise was already already there. He, he already had uh, some kind of vow that he will always fulfill this. Okay. Fulfill this promise. The f fulfill the promise to Vamandev. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I I would have to reread Prabhupada's explanations. So. Any other questions, comments? That's a really nice question. Um, here in the translation, it makes reference to further bondage to fruitive activities. And the, the, the full stop problem is that we are in samsara bandhana, that we are um, paying attention to activities that are conducive to our spiritual development. Now, the process of devotional service helps us to eradicate those uh, tendencies. Um, and the example of Prahlad Maharaj is that he's always remembering the Lord. Now, it's difficult sometimes to remember the Lord in good times, let alone difficult times. But you know, that, that we should do our best to remember the Lord and one way is to have a specific routine. So, you know, the, the, the routine we have in the temple is offering arti, chanting um, our japa, you know, reading Srimad Bhagavatam. So, this, these follow, following these processes during the course of a day it is really important. So, for those devotees who come on the Kirtan course, of course, the, the most important thing they've learnt is Kirtan. And the reason they've come is because they're interested in Kirtan. The reason we've come is because we're interested in Kirtan. And, and to take those skills back and develop them for themselves. Um, it's, you know, uh, it, it's one of those important aspects that we have to make ourselves Krishna conscious to be able to help other people's Krishna consciousness. So just as we have to learn a medical procedure to be able to teach someone else that procedure, we have to learn it to be able to teach it. So we have to learn devotional service and we have to learn from a spiritual master um, or other uh, highly uh, enlightened and elevated souls. So we have to take shiksha, which means we have to take instruction from uh, other devotees and that's what I would encourage everyone to do is, is to maintain contacts with each other because that's the Sangha, to also keep in touch with the teachers because that's the Shiksha 
uh, and to maintain the practice of, of um, daily kirtan um, because in that we are hearing and chanting the, the, the names of the Lord and at least that's, that's you know that's really positive and devote especially if we do it in the mood of love and devotion then we are de developing our Krishna consciousness like that and then additionally as Prabhupada is explaining then it, it's good way we can to go and visit the temple and to take darshan of the deities offer some service if we can do some service and um, even consider having Sri Sri Gornitai deities at home um, this is Srila Prabhupada's, you know, said we can put, uh, give Gornitai deities and if put them, people put them on their, their bookshelf or their mantelpiece and the deities will actually preach from the shelf and they will convert those people to make them Krishna conscious. You know, they will actually help the Krishna consciousness of us all. So, Sri Sri Gornitai deities, they are very merciful, if they don't take offence. You know, we can offer them some fruit and some water uh, and some love and devotion every day. Patram Pushpam Falam Toyam, Yo Me Bhakti Do we know this? Um, and I think the other thing that we have to do, which is linked to the term assured in this verse, then uh, um, uh, the Lord says to Prahlad Maharaj that I assure you of this. Um, and Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, he uses the t same terminology several times, particularly chapters 2, 10 and 18, then he asks Arjuna Tatranu, he says, listen, listen to me. So just listen um, and take this instruction. Um, and, you know, we all know the summation verse is Sarvadama Prichyacha, Maam Ekam Sharanam Vajah, Aham Tvam. Go on. Sarva, Pape Bhyo, Moksha Yishmi, Masu Chaha. Masu Chaha. I assure you. Yeah, guarantee it. Yeah. I guarantee that I will remove, I, Aham Tvam, I will take away your, yeah, Pape Bhyo, your sinful uh, activities and tendencies. So this is really important, you know. We have to Sarva Dharma and preach. What does Sarva Dharma and preach? means Sarva Dharma means offload all those karma bandana tendencies, off offload the fruitive activities. And you can't just give stuff up. You have to swap for a, for a higher uh, thing. That's why we call it higher taste. So we swap for a higher taste. And as we, as we taste the higher taste of Krishna consciousness, we lose the taste for you know, smoking, drinking, television, anything else that, that's going on. So that higher taste. And, and so this Sarva Dharma means that this is what we should do. And in Bhagavatam it says, Savai Pumso Paro Dharma, Yato Bhakti or So we have, we have to Bhakti uh, or Dokshaja to the transcendental Lord. It, it is the, the Para Dharma, it is the ultimate Dharma. You know, not Sarva Dharma, offload all of those uh, fruited activities. It's parodharma, it is spiritual. The, the responsibility, savai pum sam, of every living entity is to offer devotion to the transcendental Lord. It's there, it's in 126 in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada lectured on that verse dozens of times. It's one of the most lectured on verses, it's such an important verse. So we have to remember that our dharma is devotional service, any aspect. So remember the nine processes of devotional service. At least, you know, remember the Lord, speak about the Lord, and sing about the Lord. I don't, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. And you should definitely consider one of the other transcendental activities, which is to honor prasada at nine o'clock and break our ekadashi fast, if that's okay. Uh, I thank you all very much. Um, Shri Bhagavatam Ki, Shri Sri Radha Gopina Ki, Jaya Gopina.
I wish my French would be able to talk. I will. 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 I
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna.